Are you a DIY enthusiast and your family is planning to do a shed to house conversion? The first major crossroads that you're gonna have to decide is whether you're going to do all of the work for your utilities by yourself or if you're going to hire a professional. I'm about to share our insights of how we did it so that you can make your decision easier. Hey y'all, my name is Bo Brotherton with Shed to House and in 2018, my family converted a 16 by 48 shed into our full-time home. And then we did it again in 2020 and we converted this building, which is a 14 by 24 that we call our shed to studio. So I've done this a couple of times and let's start with the first step. The first step to getting utilities to your house is to actually know what kind of utilities you have access to. I'm talking grid tied, off grid with solar. Are you gonna want well water, municipal water, or maybe you wanna install a rain water harvesting collection system. Are you gonna do septic system or perhaps maybe like a composting toilet? Are you gonna rough it and go out in the woods and dig a hole by a tree? I'm just kidding, don't do that. There's levels y'all, there's levels that you just don't wanna cross. So for us, we could not dig a well, which is why on our county road, we have a municipal co-op water. No joke, we would have to go 900 feet down in order to get clean water. You guys, Bruce Willis in Armageddon had to go 800 feet to blow up a meteor. I will make 800 feet. I swear to God, I will. And I gotta go 900 feet down to get clean water. And then in terms of power, we knew our limits and we knew that we wanted to be grid tied so that we had everything easy while we learned how to do this whole homesteading thing. And then we went with a traditional septic system with a leach field. Now we did install gutters and we do have a rainwater harvesting system and rainwater harvesting is its own solo video. More, more, right there. So after knowing what utilities you need, you'll need to start planning. For municipal water and grid type power, you're going to have to run it from the source, usually at the road and then you gotta get it to your house. Some people are gonna decide to put the house right at the road in order to save money and time because everything is nice and easy right there. We didn't want that because we didn't want our house at the road. We didn't want our kids playing right by a busy county road and we are surrounded by forest. But it meant that we needed to know how far of the run was going to be for water and electric from the meter to the house. At the time, I didn't have access to all of my tools, so I did something kind of weird. I up the tractor supply and I bought a 100 foot rope. That was all that they had at the time. And that was my measuring tape. I ended up taking the rope and I put it on two little stepping posts, string it all the way out, 100. And then that, I knew that that was 100 feet. Then I took this in and I would go all the way to the other end. That was another 100 feet. Then I took this in and went all the way to the next. I was able to go around the trees. I was able to go as a crow flies where I knew that we needed to go across our driveway and then to the house. And it was fairly accurate of me knowing that I needed at least a 200 foot run for our electric. Right, and then I needed a 400 foot run for our main water line. All right, the third thing we did is once we had our land cleared for our home site, we put in the order for our one inch PEX pipe for our main water line and then all of the fittings. That is my plumbing. I've never gotten so excited. Hoses that are gonna run the water to my house. We got this cool guy. It is so cool because this is what we use. We're going straight into this to our meter. One as a test. Okay, so that thing crimps. Then I loaded everything up in our small SUV and I took it to our property. Now I wanna give you a heads up that when you decide to trench for anything really, you better take care of yourself, especially if you are trenching in the heat of a summer. You guys, I did not do this. And I, I, I don't have all the footage for some of this stuff because while we were trenching for our main water line, I ended up getting sick. I ended up getting dehydrated and I had to go to the hospital. I had to go to the local ER here in town and I got three bags of IV fluids. Now the great news is that somehow we have a stud of a permaculture designer Pete Van Dyke from DroughtProofTexas.com. He came out the next day and laid every single pipe, did every single fitting for our hose bibs. We showed up. We were running a trencher and then we had to trench some of the, we had to clean it up a little bit. I got dehydrated and I had to go to the hospital and get three bags of IV, but I just now called uh, Pete Van Dyke of Drought Proof Texas. We have water! Oh my 
gosh, Pete! <laughs> Shut up! You ready? Yes, yes I am. <gasps> oh, oh my, my gosh! Do you want me to do a big wow. one? It's gonna spray us, but you want me to do it? Do it full. Oh no, it's a bad. Okay, that's it. <laughs> water! We that? have water! There it is! That's all the way! <laughs> Pete, it has been five years, buddy, and I still will thank you in every single video. Thank you so much. So again, I didn't get any footage of Pete laying our one inch pipe, but it basically looks something similar to this is whenever I did an 800 foot run to the back of our property. I didn't do pecs, but for this I did PVC. So of course the fittings are completely different. It's glue versus crimping, but just so you can see, it's the same sort of trenching, the same sort of needing to clear the trench and make sure that there's not a whole lot of bumps in it. It's the same thing of being able to lay the pipe, except for PEX, it's in a roll. For PVC, it was 20 foot sticks. But the hose bib fittings and the spigots, that is fairly similar. Now that we had water, it was time to move on to getting our power hooked up. How this worked was that we were in charge of purchasing and installing our own meter pole, which is merely digging a six to eight foot hole and then dropping the giant meter pole into it. And I don't know if you've ever dug a hole before, but it's maybe the hardest thing you ever do in your life. <laughs> the pole was marked for how deep it had to be, and all you would really need is an extra set of hands to be able to get the meter pole in the hole. And the meter pole came with its own panel and we're able to have an outlet out by our road, which we use every single day for electric fencing. Now, getting the actual power from the meter pole to your house, that's a completely different story. Most of you are going to need to hire this out. I mean, perhaps you were able to trench and lay the electrical PVC conduit yourself, and maybe, maybe you'd be able to run the wire yourself if you knew what kind of electrical wire you would need. However, you would still need to know the expert knowledge of hooking up the electrical components. This is where you would need to hire a pro. You guys, I am very blessed and we have great friends. Uh, my friend, John Michael, he is a master electrician. At the time he was a journeyman, now he's a master electrician. So he knew how to do all of this. And you guys, no joke, we call this, his wife, we call this the carry house, like his wife's house, they come and they stay here. Now John Michael is going to bend PVC pipe with a heat gun. It's kind of cool. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. It's starting to. Yeah. I can't express how awesome this is to be able to have friends who are smarter than you are, have a community that can come and help. If you have that, definitely see what can motivate them, see if they can come and help you. Uh, if not, you're just gonna have to hire this out. In fact, I didn't even want to attempt to film this in detail of having someone hook up their electrical panel because I didn't want this to seem like this was an electrical instructional video. I did not want that liability Nope. This is the very first time that we have ever tested power in our house. Okay, you do it. Ah! It works! Oh my goodness. That's awesome. And then the same line of hire a pro, we then started getting ready for our interior rough electric and plumbing. Again, we hired this out. And if you have never done this before, I highly recommend that you hire a pro because the last thing you want is an electrical fire inside of your house while you're sleeping or your walls busting out and leaking water because you didn't do the plumbing correct. Lastly was the installation of our septic system. We went through several different ideas regarding the septic system. Unfortunately, the first person that we went to go hire to do the septic system uh, tried to take advantage of us. He told us that our soil needed an aerobic system. And so what that meant was a $10,000 cost plus a $250 yearly inspection fee. I sourced out other contractors and we found out that that is not true. In fact, the aerobic system should have been cheaper closer to like $7,000 at the time. This is all before inflation. But we were able to find a contractor that would quote us the correct price for a conventional system install for a total of $7,800, including the septic permit. 
and we have never had a problem. We've been here for five years and we just now got our tank pumped for the first time, but the septic field has been perfect. It's always green grass over there. So regarding the septic permit, we live outside of city limits, but in a county that doesn't have any building codes. But I'm pretty sure anywhere you go in the United States, you're going to have to get a septic permit. Just seems like that's something that people always have to do. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to have a septic permit if you don't have a septic system. If you want to do a composting toilet, you don't have to do a septic permit. Of course, we had four kids at the time. We were living three hours away at Kelly's parents. So yes, I hired this out. I hired a pro to be able to take care of our septic system. What I want you to take away from this, there is a lot of DIY projects that you can do in your house when you have your rough electrical and your rough plumbing. You know, and I would even say that you could hire all that out and then you could do the, the finish out is what it's called for your electrical by installing the outlets, by installing some of the plumbing fittings. I would say that is less of a risk because then it's all exterior. Like if there's a problem, a pro can come and fix it in like an hour, really easy. But if it's in the walls and you mess that up, you have to take walls out. So that's what you have to think of. If you've never done this before, are you willing to take the risk of doing this yourself? If you have the knowledge, go for it. Absolutely save the money. But if you haven't done it, I highly recommend that you hire out the rough electrical and the rough plumbing. Now I will say this, you can totally do your main water line run DIY. You can save money doing that. I would have done that, but I got sick and my buddy ended up doing it for me. But you don't have to hire a plumber to lay PEX pipe 400 feet. It's, that'd be a waste. But your rough electrical and the rough plumbing inside of your house, I recommend you hire it out. And I even have links down below for the full cost of what it costs us to build this home, our main 16 by 48. It's about 800 square foot main shed to house as well as our shed to studio that is 336 square foot and I have a 3d digital builder so that you can go down and build your united portable building and find out how much it will cost you to start that project thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you on the next shed to house video